the, the modern day family, the good majority, it's, it's becoming mainstream that you know uh, that they're divorcing mm. family. It's, it's not even something that is uh, mm. uh, that, that is being hidden. Mm. Uh, what Divorce if right. what, what what if you know kids grow up in dysfunctional family? Mm -hmm. You know how do you how, how do you give them the best situation to to grow up to have a balance? As My parents, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or uh, you know, what what do you say to those kids who don't have that environment? First, you have to acknowledge that this is the environment, and and also they got to be able to say rather than saying, you know what. I am less than anybody else because my family was dysfunctional. Uh -huh. Stop. I mean, I would say stop saying that. Uh -huh. Because what your family gave you is an experience that nobody else right. actually gave you. Even if you went through hell, uh -huh. at least you know how to deal with hell. Uh -huh. You know? Right. Uh, I have, there's the other extreme where someone goes through perfect life, where, uh -huh. where family is no fights, every uh -huh. time is smiles. Uh -huh. And the day that they get out of this family and have their own, uh -huh. they'll be like, what, oh, oh. I thought family is everything is nice. Uh -huh. You won't know how to deal with it. Right. So, so find the good in every situation. Find um, something valuable in it. But mm -hmm. I think more importantly is, for example, uh, kids who've grown up with a uh, single parent family or uh, parents divorced, mm -hmm. right? Are they not balanced? Do, do you think they will be unbalanced? I, I, I don't, I would not like to entertain that, that conversation with them. I would not say, they, they will come with that idea, you know what, I like that because, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, so I, I only find had... it's convenient to find something to blame? Sometimes, uh -huh. yes, uh -huh. sometimes about I blame it on my parents because uh -huh. they did that to me, but I would rather them to say, okay, you had your parents, they were not together, uh -huh. what do you cherish most uh -huh. is the connection with your mom and your dad. Uh -huh. They may not even have the same house, uh -huh. but do you still love them? Uh -huh. So it that it's that relationship. Even if parents are divorced, you can still be a role model. You can still tell them that, you know, we have differences and we had to move apart. Mm -hmm. But that does not make you any less in terms of my child. Mm -hmm. You know? And that is very powerful. That gives a lot of grounding to an mm -hmm. individual. When the when the worst thing is that when a mom t tells a kid, you know, because I've divorced, your your dad and you are nothing to me. And she moves on to rebuild her life yeah. and denies any prior existence. It really damage the kids that way. This struggle. Yeah. Destroy it. That struggle will be lifelong. Yeah. And they will need really to reach a point where they realize that my idea of what, my image of what mom should be is not being met by that person. But mom can be someone else. Sometimes stepmom, sometimes grandma, wow. sometimes sister. So the control has to be in your own hand. It is always. Right. It is the image that we have. Right. As a child, we all have an ideal idea of whether consciously or not. We all have an idea of how we want mom and dad to be. The perfect. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's different for everybody, but we all have that. You know, I. Would, you could you could just walk on the street and, and ask anybody. You know, what's the perfect mom? What is the perfect right. dad? Everybody will be able to tell you something. But then sometimes the cards that life mm -hmm. deal us with, we have to realize that that image, where we get dysfunction sometimes is when we have those images of what a perfect life is, mm -hmm. there's not much reality. Mm -hmm. And when there's an imbalance, then how we cope with that, you know, to re make sense of that, that reality that we have. If we have the right coping mechanism, then we are still balanced, we are still um, effective into having a, 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 a full life, but it's when we we don't know what to do, then we can have coping mechanisms which are ineffective. So let's talk about adults. Sometimes they go into let's say talk about family. Let's say they go into a very tense um, divorce process, for example, mm -hmm. and they don't know how to cope with it. They they get totally lost. So how they cope? Some may go get into drinking, some may get into smoking, mm -hmm. or may get other other ways. But then, how is that effective? Because they are trying to cope with, I would wish to have a relationship, uh, a family, uh, and the image is in this way, but what reality is, is different. So you have, if you go into a scale, it's going to be this. Mm -hmm. So what we all try, always try to do in life, we're always trying to create balance. Right. So there are two extremes. One, there are people who are, 
um, for like this, and they're trying to be this way. And sometimes when we are this, what they want, they want something that is perfectly balanced. So these are the ideal, mm -hmm. you know, ideal image. There's no such thing as life is this. Mm -hmm. It's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. It's always changing. It's always evolving. Uh, and that is a skill that we got to. And when you talk about negoci negotiation in a relationship, mm -hmm. it's about saying sometimes I get what I want, sometimes I don't. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as I don't go off scale too much, where I become dysfunctional, yeah. how can I keep my balance? You know, and that is is an art, the art of 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 building relationships. What, what would your advice be to live a good life, a happy life? Whoa. <laughs> That's that's a tall order. Uh, <laughs> it's a very simple question. It's a very simple question, but uh, let me put it this way: What's a good life? Uh -huh. Everybody has a uh -huh. their own idea. That's right. the first thing. Right. Don't even talk about the whole idea of happiness. Uh -huh. You know, you can go to a, a, a bookstore and there will be like shelves yeah. and shelves of books about <laughs> happiness, right? And everybody will have their own definition of what right. happiness is. I think, in my idea, is what is a good life mm -hmm. is when, and that's how I live by it, mm -hmm. is when who I am internally mm -hmm. and who I project mm -hmm. is the same thing. Oh, not fake. I don't have to put a mask. Mm -hmm. Okay, we always have to put a mask. There's no such thing <laughs> as I am, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I would not be um, non-congruent. Right. So my private self, personal self, is as close as possible to. So basically, I I, I tell people what You're you see, too, so. what you see is what you get, you know. Oh. And to me, that striving towards that is a way of saying living a life, being genuine, mm -hmm. being connected with myself, and that helps me to connect with people without trying to pretend to be someone. Else. Um, you you're working very closely with young people. Yes. Uh, in you know providing providing counseling to them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would be interested to hear from you, you know, what are the skills required for them to thrive, uh, you know, to get to the next level, uh, to, to succeed and to lead in the 21st century. Yeah. Well, I think, of course, if we are talking about uh, technical skills, that's, that's one area that you have to, to equip them. So, but I think for me, uh, in my capacity, why, why I feel is that uh, the word that comes, when you ask me this question, right, the oh. word that comes to my mind is um, teach them how to connect. Right. You know, it's... It's a lost art, isn't it? It's a lost art. It's, you know, you can have all the degrees you want, all the skills that you want, mm -hmm. but when you are down there at the job, uh -huh. you know, and you've got something to fix and you don't know how to connect. Don't know how to fix things through people. Yes. You don't have that people skills. You don't oh. have that ability to relate with others. How do you work as a team? How do you work in a company? How do you work anywhere, in fact? Uh -huh. Because this world is so connected. Now. How do you develop those kind of skills? Well, Put down your phone? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one, one, one way is to really connect with people face to face right. um, and to really experience that. You know, experience that. How do I deal when my friend does not agree with me? Right. You know, it's not something that it is not something that you learn in the book. No. There's no school for that. Actually, there is a school. And it's called life. <laughs> you know, and but the best yeah. is if you have a mentor. Yeah. You have a uh, uh, so self. seek out mentorship. Yes, if you have role models, mentors, uh -huh. that's key. Uh -huh. I think a lot of times our uh, 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 youth today right. are are bombarded with information. Yeah, they there's no on. shortage of tech talks. No, for, yes, do. yes. You, uh -huh. did, did how, just, how is that different from having a mentor? You know, a mentor helps them make sense of this whole thing. Uh -huh. they, are, they are bombarded with information. They don't know what fits into their own puzzle, you know. Mm. Uh, when you have a mentor, it's somebody who knows you as you, as a person. Right. And that mentor is able to help you make sense of this whole thing. Uh, all these pieces are coming to because you because they've lived life before you. That's that's one thing. But I meant yes, that that could be one one uh, mm. uh, uh, um, one aspect of a of a mentor. But I think a mentor needs to also have the ability to see you for who you are, mm. not just someone who has life experience, 
but that ability to see you and more importantly, the person that you want to become. So, so they must care about you, they must journey with you <laughs> to steal your words. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh -huh. A mentor is not somebody that you can, I mean, yes, some people say, you know, I pay somebody to mentor uh -huh. me. That's a counsellor. <laughs> that's a counsellor and you come to me and, and or to any counsellor and say, okay, right. let's talk about that. Uh -huh. But to me, it's about a mentor is somebody who knows you, understands you, yeah. and know who you want to be, but then empowers you. And they're invested in you. Yeah. Right. And at the end of the day, uh, I said from uh, my angle is uh, the job of a mentor is to make their mentees become better than themselves. Wow. And I think if a mentor can do that, mm -hmm. that's, you know, I mean, when your mentee comes back to you and say, you know what, today I've achieved this. You want them to be better. Oh, yes. But not all mentors want. <laughs> so if you, if you can find such an individual in your life, it doesn't have to be a professional, it can be like what I say, it could be uh, a, a close family member, a friend, mm -hmm. or a, a grandparent, you know. Right. Uh, it could even be a cousin, it, could, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's that it doesn't even have to be somebody that is in your family. Right. You know, uh, that, that's someone that as you connect with, you aspire to be like, mm -hmm. you know. So that is what I feel the youth today does not really have. So for, for um, people with experience, for adults, mm. for, for older people, mm. it's almost a social responsible, a responsibility mm. you know, to, to reach out and help younger kids, isn't it? I think, I think that would be nice. Mm -hmm. you know, that would be nice with life experience. Mm -hmm. uh, the, they have the, the benefit of hindsight. Yeah. You know, is it hindsight or foresight? Uh, both. Yeah, they have both. But I think I do not want to go to an extreme as well, um, where we associate men, being a mentor with age. Before doing what I do now, I used to work with terminally ill uh, individuals who are, who are just going to, you know, maybe the last few weeks of their life. And I've seen, I've been with people who on their deathbed will say, this is my life. Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful for the people who have journeyed with me. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you have that sense of peace. peace. Right. But there was one experience that I had. There was this elderly man who could not die. Nurses will tell me, there's nothing. It's just like, medically, there was nothing, but he just held on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Is he afraid? Or he was not fear. He can't let go or something. He was not fear. Uh -huh. And I asked him, so what, what, how, how can that happen? They said, he just cannot die. You know? And I was very intrigued. I said, like, what do you mean cannot die? So yeah. I, went, I went in and I sat with him. Uh, I was able to have very long conversations with him at least three times. And um, I give him space to um, grieve. Grieve things that he wished he could have done. Mm -hmm. Grieve the loss of not, not the loss, not, grieve the fact that he didn't nurture the relationship with people who were important to him in his life. Mm -hmm. And he was, he just talked about that. Mm -hmm. he, he, and after three sessions, he passed away. Wow. And I was not there. He passed away at night. Uh -huh. The next day I went in and I asked him, so where is Mr. So-and-so? And, -so? and then she was like, he, he's gone. I said, how was it? And I said, it was the most peaceful thing ever. Wow. So, so what you I mean by- peace with yourself. Yes. It's important. It's very important. So you can, it's not about age. That uh -huh. person was really old, uh -huh. but you can have a lot of internal turmoil. You can, you can uh -huh. be really unsettled. So being a mentor is not always about age. Right. It's sometimes about that inner... The insight, as you say, of the 15 and that 17 year old. That, yes. That she thinks that you yes. don't. Yes, correct. Right. correct. It, it, you can have a very young, uh, chronologically by age, uh -huh. young person, uh -huh. but the insight right. that that person has about life is right. so much more right. than... Right. Just as my daughter is teaching me about, about life all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they will surprise you. Right. They will surprise you. And, and that is what to me I feel is 
actually mentoring? It's a very deep conversation that we've just mm. had. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, um, I, I normally would end with this question. Mm. You know, what change would you like to make? And, and um, you know, we're coming towards the end of the year. It's a good time to think <laughs> about the change in the short term. Yes, 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 yes. So you can choose either or, you know, in 2019 or, you know, in general. And what would John Donat Sensen like to change? The change I would like to see is um, people realizing that we are not, we are more than what we think we are. Jesus, that's deep. That's another hour of conversation. Yes. No, what I mean by this is, is through my work, uh -huh. uh, that's really the change that I want to make for myself, mm -hmm. is to really, while being conscious of me being a counsellor, but never losing sight, never ever losing sight, that my power in the position that I'm given is to be human. Wow. And I think that's one thing for 2019 that I would like to always remind myself and, and even go further than you know, in that, in that, in that uh -huh. journey, um, because I've seen the impact we can have for both the pers the people that I connect with and myself, mm -hmm. and I would like to see that happen. That's profound. Even more. That's profound. Uh, you, you're a good human being. Oh, I hope you, so. You're a good <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome.